Good Arkansas State team. Uh, a team that um, Mike does a great job. Uh, they return a lot. Uh, and then you add Sills, who's a um, SEC talent and a guy who can, can really fill it up. Uh, and uh, they play hard. Uh, one of the things I was really impressed with tonight was our effort. Uh, I think it's a, um, we want that to be a reoccurring theme, our effort and what we do defensively. Uh, we really challenged this team um, last few days with our defensive effort. Um, I thought that uh, uh, we were really good in the Jackson State game, and, and we had to be, uh, minus guys. And uh, now you get a couple guys back, and, and, and you can't slip in that area. So we challenged them. We wanted to hold them under five threes. Um, <clears throat> we wanted to out-rebound them 20. Um, again, we wanted to pound the offensive glass, 24 offensive rebounds. I feel great about that. Uh, I thought Coleman Hawkins had his go spurt in the first half. Uh, with effort plays, as I've seen maybe in my time here, uh, you know, I, one of the things that I pay a lot of attention to are fouls drawn. He drew, he drew 10 fouls tonight. That's a sign of tremendous effort and, and, and activity. Uh, I thought we got great play again from, <clears throat> from Ben off the bench. Uh, if we would have cleaned up our screening tonight, you know, he and, Col he and uh, Omar probably have uh, a few more minutes. But uh, great to have Curbelo, uh, Curbelo and Trent back. Uh, you know, we saw Curbelo just kind of spray it. Uh, you know, we scored 92 points tonight, missed 23s, and we're a good shooting team and just didn't shoot the ball very well. Uh, we're still a little out of sync on that end, uh, but uh, um, but it was great to have him back. I thought he just hit singles all night. Just made a lot of really smart plays. We opened the court up and, and the stretch at the, in the middle of the second half, and, and, and he got downhill. And uh, another really really solid night from Jacob Grandison. Uh, and then Trent does what Trent does is harass everybody's best guard into a really tough night and uh, had. Uh, you know, a nice night on himself uh, offensively. So, all in all, very pleased. Uh, now we take a step up, we go on the road, and we find out uh, truly who we are. Right here, Ben. <clears throat> Brad, you, no matter who the opponent, Division One, 100 points in two games, Coleman and Corbell are both saying defense, defense, defense is important on Monday. Um, how have you gotten through to them on that end, and, and what have you done well on that end? There's a reason we got beat a few times last year, and it was usually, you know, nights when when the ball didn't go in and we didn't have enough energy or enough um, fortitude to play through our opponents, and, and and we're really trying hard to, to to control what our effort is every single day and every single night out, and and we can guard. We've got guys who are who are very very good defenders. I was, you know, RJ came in there in that second half, and I mean, that's how I base freshmen. Playing time is, is what they do defensively, and uh, so we're getting better. We're trying. It's it's one of the things that we keep telling our guys. You know, offense wins games, defense wins championships, and where we want to go, we got to guard. And uh, you know, again, this was a this was a much better team than anybody we faced, and uh, held them to less than five threes, and and uh, and dominated the glass against a team that uh, you know I think at the end of the year will be an NCAA tournament team. <clears throat> You mentioned Coleman's you know, stretch in the first half. Just what do you think maybe clicked for him in that latter part where I mean maybe early shot selection was a little iffy, but it's, everything kind of worked after that. Yeah, I mean, you know, Coleman's you know Coleman's a sophomore but played six minutes a game. You know, he's very juvenile and is still in his growth and, and, and we can't forget that he's still developing into a um, really good college player and, and experience in some things. So he's going to make some mistakes, and, and as long as they're the aggressive type, I'm, I'm, I'm good. And I and, uh, thought he was much better tonight. I thought he was much more, um, sub, I don't want to say subdued, but under control. And uh, when he plays like that, boy, he, he's, a, he's a heck of a player. It seems like you ran a lot of guys at Sills tonight defensively, whether it was Trent, whether it was Jacob, whether it was DeMonte, and, and how much, you know, 
freedom does that give you on the defensive end to be able to run that many kind of different lengths of body that guys that who are pretty good scorers? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think when you look at Sills, I think you look at, uh, uh, I want to see what he did tonight. Uh, Eaton was 5 of 14. Uh, I'll take those numbers every night. And again, it's, it was a challenge. I mean, those guys are good players. And, uh, you know, you want to make guys work for it and, and don't give them anything easy. And I, I was a little disappointed. We had a little stretch in the first half. We gave up some easy baskets in transition, I think three of them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we can throw length at them. Coleman gives us that versatility as well. Uh, you get DeMonte with his length as well, and uh, we can throw, because all those guys can move their feet, they can really guard, so we can throw a lot of different weapons at you. So, yeah. so uh, Coleman, Coleman Hawkins got the start tonight um, over DeMonte. What was the thought process going into that? None. I mean, it, that's, that's just, uh, you know, we kind of brought DeMonte off the bench. I like him in that role as a, as a veteran. And, and uh, you know we're just uh, we're still trying to figure all that about, all that out till we get all of our pieces. But uh, yeah, that was that's that's been you know, part of part of what we've been thinking and trying to, to grow into is having a very very productive bench. They, <clears throat> they got a little bit of foul trouble, went to a zone there for a little bit. How do you think your guys handled that, and how, how does that bode for you know when you start facing the high major teams? Um, you know, I, I think we're we're a team that um, could be very difficult to zone. You know, and, and I mean, you start putting Coleman in the middle of that. You put Jacob and Devonte in the middle. Uh, you put Carmelo in the middle, um, and uh, you know, we're still going to run sets and ball screen it. And um, you know, we were a monster last year offensively in terms of our efficiency against zones. So uh, again, we've got to we got to continue to probably work on it a little more, but. Uh, I thought we handled it okay tonight. Eric? What was Carmelo's lead up like to this game, and what was important for him to have the efficient night, seven assists, only two turnovers? He struggled with turnovers in the exhibition game. I mean, maybe they counted. I, You know, I, with him, um, yeah, I, you know, it, it, it's never easy. I was really concerned about both he and Trent tonight in limited minutes and, and, and trying to control their minutes. Um, you know, it's not easy to from just from a conditioning standpoint to take off, you know, seven, eight, nine days, whatever that process was. And, uh, you know, they do a little bit every day. And when you're in the concussion protocol, there's steps you have to take, four or five days worth. Uh, and any setback, you just kick you back. So, you know, you guys think I'm nuts when I say day to day, I don't know. Um, but it, it, it's the protocol. Uh, and, you know, Trent's a unique athlete. Trent's, Trent's as gifted an athlete as there is on this campus. And, and, you know, he comes back and not breathing hard, not even tired, you know, first day, and looks like he's never missed a day. You know, it makes seven straight threes and a little bit of a scrimmage. You know, it's just Trent. Uh, but um, I was pleased with both of them. I thought they both did a great job. And Carvello just hit singles tonight. He didn't have to do anything crazy because we, were, we spread the floor and got him in open space. All right. Coach, you start Trent out on Sills a couple possessions. Eaton starts scoring. You move him on to Eaton. Is Trent's just ability to guard multiple guys and, and just be a shutdown defender? How it was just cut the head off the snake type thing that you've talked about before? Um, how, talk about his defensive prowess and uh, he just looks better every time. He's elite. I, I've been saying it for two and a half, three years. I mean, he is elite. He never gets strained. Um, you know, you want him on the ball. Uh, you, 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 if, they, if you get a shooter and they start running him off screens, he never gets screened. He's always right there. He may make one because they jump over him, but uh, over the course of 40 minutes, and then he never fatigues. He never gets tired. And, and you know, it's, it's, it, it takes your soul when you, when you see him. Uh, guarding you and you think, oh man, I got him, and no, there he is right there. And, and he's just that, that guy, and he takes so much pride. Uh, you know, today in our shoot around, I mean, our, our walkthrough, I mean, he's guarding his tail off. And I mean, guys are getting, guys are getting ticked at him, and you know, he's going full bore, you know, for, for shoot around. So he does it every day, does it every play. You only got one more without Kofi now, but 
has been, even when he comes back, earned the right to maybe be part of a big time rotational piece once you get him back and in your front court? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think his productivity, I think his his uh, uh, his his experience for a guy who hasn't played a lot but has been in our program and knows what we do, and uh, there's a tremendous amount of of um, confidence I have knowing that he doesn't make mistakes, and and uh, that's there's no doubt he's 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 earned that right. 18 to 2 run after the technicals. Um, was that kind of a tactical move, or were you just, you just mad? <laughs> we're sticking up for my guy, and uh, you know, that's that's um, you know, I didn't he really say much, but you know, he backed me, but I, that's more you know, we, we've got to be better at, at some of that, but uh, yeah, I'm going to stick up for my guy when I think he's right. Was Bellows technical explained to you at all? Yeah, or just what were oh, there, but back and forth there? Yeah, there was a lot of bantering, and and you know we've got to we've got to get beyond that. So, uh, you know it's you know it's 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 one of those deals we'll talk about tomorrow, and we'll, we'll get it handled and make sure that we just turn our back and walk away from that stuff. Got it. Andre uh, opened up the game with a couple of really nifty passes um, that got the crowd really excited. Just what does he bring to this team as far as entertainment value and playmaking? I, I don't look at it as entertainment, so oh, maybe, maybe you guys are better off a answering that question. Um, yeah, I, you know he, he he's got abilities that very few have, and and when you, I hope everybody appreciates what they see sometimes because it's it is very spectacular. It is very um, rare. Not many people have have those capabilities to do those things, and and uh, he makes them look pretty easy, um, a lot. But uh, the thing I'm really proud with, proud of Bello tonight was how, how he played defensively. Uh, he took that challenge and, and hadn't had to do that in the first couple exhibition games. Uh, tonight he, he he was he was he was dialed in at that end, and that was huge. Coach, go, going into this season, you knew you had good guards. You knew you had an All-American center. But what is the play that you're getting out of the three and the four positions doing for this team? Is it is that something that can bump this up the team up to a different level? Time will tell. I think so. I you know I, I I've always been very positive about Coleman. I, I've said all summer I, I think he's ready to take that next step. I think we're starting to see that. Uh, now he's got another step. Um, you know, high-level dudes and, and legit size, and, and believe me, Marquette's got that. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not for lack of talent, lack of ability. And, uh, you know, Jacob has been, has been a guy that, that has just grown. And uh, now you add Luke and, and, and RJ and, uh, to those wing spots and versatility, and you throw Devontae back in there and, and it can play one through four, and all of a sudden you got a group of guys that you feel pretty good about. Brad, I know you said day to day with all these guys, but Austin Hutcherson, are you expecting longer absence from him, or what's the latest with him? He actually went through the first part of a um, our game day shoot around today, which is was, was shooting. So I don't have the update beyond that, but he was doing, he was actually shooting. Uh, so I'm taking that as encouragement and I'll talk to Paul afterwards. But beyond that, I, I, I you know, I, I, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means practice tomorrow or practice whenever. So, you know, we'll just see what that, see what that looks like. Looks like, excuse me. Obviously it's been a rough go for him. Injury wise, just how does this impact him? Um, both mentally and physically to get into a rhythm once he is able to come back. Well, he's such a good kid. I mean, he just, you know, he just keeps grinding and he keeps working and he keeps doing everything he can. And, um, you know, he's he's an unbelievable human being. And, and uh, so I think he's, you know, he's probably frustrated, but, uh, you know, maybe, maybe this is the last one. Maybe this is the last day. And he can settle in and, and, and have some long periods of, of of practice and success, so, and uh, I hope that's the case. Gabby. You guys had 24 second chance points, and that was kind of a similar number on Tuesday. 
How much emphasis have you put on just the offensive boards in the offseason? A lot. It's one of the areas we were not very good in last year. It was one of the one of the areas we really challenged our, this group. We've, we've spent a lot of time not just emphasizing it, working on it. There's an art to it. it we call it opposite and inside. Uh, we actually chart in the course of a season, we chart our missed shots. Uh, 74, 75% of our missed shots go middle or opposite. So we flood that area and we play percentages. And uh, uh, then it's part of hoping that we have depth that we can just by effort, just getting guys to go. And, and we chart every single day in practice the number of attempts guys have to go to the offensive glass and how many times they go. And if they're not under a certain percentage, they run. So it's a big emphasis of, of, of how we score. When you, can, when you can score on the glass, you're doing it against a defense that isn't set. And, and, it, 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 and one out of every two of offensive rebounds ends in a foul. So I like those odds. So we, we emphasize it a lot. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm.